Hello, uh, happy Pride. I am Admiral Rachel Levine, and I'm the Assistant Secretary for Health at the United States Department of Health and Human Services. And we are so excited today to have Tegan and Sarah here uh, for one of our Pride sessions. Uh, Tegan and Sarah Quinn, uh, they are musicians, they are activists, and they are founders of the Tegan and Sarah Foundation. Welcome, it's nice to meet you all. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we'll have a great talk. So, you know, one of the t topics that we're emphasizing, of course, is health equity uh, and LGBTQIA plus health equity. So if you could name one health topic, one LGBTQI plus health topic that is important to you all. You know, we started our foundation eight years ago. One of the pillars of, of our foundation was health. And specifically, we were just kind of shocked when we heard how few LGBTQ people advocate for themselves when it comes to health care. You know, like 75% of lesbians uh, avoid or postpone, you know, going to the doctors. And then, of course, as we started to learn more about transgender people and their experience at the doctors, and how much educating they were having to do when they were there, if they were even given or granted care. Um, it just was really obvious to us that we needed to, to spend a lot of time focusing on that and trying to figure out ways that we could contribute to changing um, that for, for our amazing LGBTQ community. We're also in a really unique position because we're Canadian and we live in Canada and our foundation works both in the United States and in Canada and we have really different landscapes for healthcare. So in yeah. Canada, you know, Every single person receives a general, you know, you can receive health care uh, no matter who you are, how much money you make. I mean, like care can certainly, there's a spectrum and there's, you know, certainly, um, you know, economic uh, circumstances play a role. If you can, if you live in certain neighborhoods or you can advocate for yourself or you can pay for privatized care your healthcare may be better, but in Canada at a baseline, you're not going to go to the doctor and have to like, lose your car or, you know, go into debt or whatever. So we are always really um, uh, sensitive about the fact that we are sort of navigating two really different healthcare landscapes, but also they intersect in other ways. So even in Canada, you know, you're going to see the 2S LGBTQ plus community facing really unique challenges, even with you know, uh, healthcare available. And in the United States, we have to sort of be more nuanced about the programs and the sort of, um, you know, the organizations that we support because the healthcare problems or the issues are totally different and can be, you know, unique obstacles, even just like state to state. So, uh, you know, healthcare is, it's, it's definitely the most complicated and sort of textured areas that we focus on with our foundation. But I think it is one of the ones that we're most passionate about and we very specifically focused on this idea that at the at the very start if you need some kind of health care or mental health care professional in your life just finding them can be the most you know daunting obstacle and so one of our programs at the foundation was actually just taking um, a sort of holistic approach like if we can just connect the dots between a health care provider and someone in the community we've already sort of uh, we've already like got past one of the biggest obstacles. So we started this program. Ugh, it was many, many years ago. I can't believe how long it has taken us. But we wanted to create a healthcare directory that is very simple healthcare directory where you could just go in, say where you say where you're located and what you're looking for, and we can connect the dots between you and a culturally competent healthcare provider. That to, that to me was the simplest simplest goal, and we want to expand our work outward from there. But that is something that we're really proud of. Well, that's fantastic, and the work of your foundation is helping so many people, both in Canada and in the United States. What are some of the health disparities for the LGBTQI plus community uh, that you have seen? You mentioned a couple, but what others have you seen, uh, particularly in your travels across the United States? I mean, one of the things we heard. Um, in the first year that we started the foundation, we spent a lot of that year traveling around, meeting with grassroots LGBTQ organizations and trying to figure out where the gaps were for them, was just that for a lot of us at the top of the pyramid, and I say the top of the pyramid because we're cisgendered, we're from Canada, we're white, um, we have been very successful in our career, was that I was like, the world's getting better. 
we've got gay marriage. Everyone loves gay people now. And we started traveling around and people were like, yeah, no, that's not what's happening. You know, the majority of stories you read about or hear about the representation we have in the media is often negative. And when you look at how that trickles down to actual people in the community, it affects the way they advocate for themselves. So what we kept hearing over and over again was that, yes, it's wonderful that we have gay marriage, but for the average LGBTQ person, they're still facing, you know, um, inequality at work, inequality, you know, um, in their social world. They're seeing less of themselves represented. What representation they're seeing is negative. They're not being accepted by family and friends still. They don't have community spaces because those are being washed away because, you know, people don't go to the bar in the same way. Like, it's just one thing after another. And what that does is make people not feel like advocating for themselves. They don't see themselves represented, so they don't think that they deserve to be there or that they belong there. They don't see proper uh, culturally competent care from their healthcare providers, so they avoid going. You know, at school, they're questioning or feeling insecure or uncomfortable with themselves, and there's no resources or access to resources, or the access to resources that are there are being argued about by politicians to be restricted and removed. And, and this just amounted to a lot of discomfort and a lack of care for themselves. And when we heard that, it was just like, how can we focus and make sure our mission is hitting all of these really crucial pillars to bolster and and get support and, and resources to these young people and just other community members so they can advocate for themselves. Mental health was the big one initially mm -hmm. because there were these wonderful grassroots organizations, which we still fund, um, they became really uh, important during COVID that we're doing things just like having movie nights, you know, just bringing the community together to say like, here are a bunch of other people who have the same issues or the same interests as you who identify the same as you. Um, you know, one of our big programs is LGBTQ summer camps. And it seems kind of silly because it's like, ah, it's summer camp. But for a lot of these LGBTQ plus youth, this is the first time they're not just seeing other youth like them, but adults like them. You know, to be young and not see anyone who looks like you, anyone who is like you, it makes you feel alone. And mentally, we could see that that was really still affecting the young LGBTQ population. So a lot of our focus was on how do we make them see that they're wonderful and amazing and there's lots of us out there like that. And if we could just connect them to people like us, they could have hope for their future and take better care of themselves. Absolutely. So thank you for emphasizing on the mental health aspects. You know, we tend to focus on physical health, but mental health is, is critically important. Uh, but also yeah. thank you for highlighting the importance of representation. You know, representation matters. It matters in music. It matters in uh, the other arts. It matters in terms of health care and in, your, in our governments as well. So representation is so important. So, you know, um, you, you talked about pride. Uh, for me, uh, you've talked about hope. Pride for me means hope and hope for the future. Um, if both of you could comment, what does pride mean for you? You know, it's funny. I actually was just before this lovely conversation, I was just putting down my thoughts about pride this year because I have always been a bit of a contrarian about pride. I mean, I, I love the roots of pride, like are in protest and in this sort of like bringing together the community in this like really authentic way to celebrate each other to talk about what needs to be done in the future and you know all of these types of things but to see it sort of become so commercialized i've i've, I've resisted it the more and i i want to see it as a good thing but i i can't help but sometimes feel um you know i don't know like i like there's like some part of me that wants it to still be ours or 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 wants it to still be rooted in these these things of you know this is this is rebellion this is protest this is this is about advancing you know, the work that we're doing. This is about, um, you know, this is about, uh, I don't know, like it's, a, it to, to me, it's, it's, it's still sort of this, like, it's this really like fraught thing, but this year feels different to me because I'm a parent and I have a son and I have been thinking about how moving it is to me to it's, it makes me sad, but it it's moving to me that I am a part of a generation that I was able to marry my wife. I was able to have a son. When when he was born, I went online a week after he was born and filled out, you know, his the information for his birth certificate. And no one ever doubted that my, that you know my my wife and I are the parents. Nobody. I didn't have to adopt him. I didn't have to prove anything. I just 
put it down. And then a few weeks later, a beautiful birth certificate from the Canadian government arrived. And I, this year I find myself thinking about all the people who came before us that made that happen. And that mm -hmm. I am part of a very small minority who will experience this, you know, that, that there's just generations of people who didn't get to have even the simplest bureaucratic experience of getting to like fill out a form and receive a document that says that, you know, they are, that they're married or that they're the parents of their child. And so I'm thinking about that in with pride this year, that, that we have made huge, huge achievement, like, you know, advances and that we have made these achievements and we should be proud of them. Uh, but we also have to think about all the people who still don't have access mm -hmm. to those rights and they're human rights. These aren't, these aren't, I don't think of them as privileges. I think of them as rights. And it's important to remember that, I think, during Pride. Absolutely. Gosh, I mean, for me, it definitely Pride means a lot of different things. Protest is huge, of course, and community building is also huge. And, um, you know, just the celebration aspect of it, I, I do think is is so important. I think for me this year, it's, it's community that's on my mind, mm -hmm. for sure. And probably visibility is the big one. For me, pride is about being visible. A lot of us pass as straight, straight people, I guess, you know what I mean? Most of the year, like, I mean, I think I'm really gay seeming, but often every time I get into a car with a stranger and they ask me what my husband does, I'm aware that I clearly don't look as gay as I think I do. But I think that I realized that for a lot of the year, I don't think about my queerness and I don't, you know, I mean, obviously we do so much work with our band and with our foundation, so I shouldn't be too hard on myself. But to me, the month of June becomes a month where I think about visibility and how can we continue to make sure that we're very visible and we're very outspoken. I'm just painfully aware that there are just so many people who still struggle in our community, who still have to be invisible, who aren't comfortable coming out or are restricted in terms of how they can be out. And I try to make sure that during this month, I'm thinking about that and being compassionate about that. And, and um, yeah, I think as we see rollbacks and attacks mm -hmm. on our rights, it's really important to stay loud and proud and be out there. And, um, and again, to infuse as much positivity into the way that our community is covered in the news and the media, because it is often so negative and we have just seen uh, stratospheric jumps in suicidality and, and depression and loneliness in young LGBTQ people, because that's what they see. They still think of themselves as a problem, something to be fixed. And for me, Pride Month is about saying there's nothing wrong with you. You're perfect the way you are. And there's millions and millions and millions of us. And we're not going to stop fighting to protect you. Well, that's exactly right. You know, um, it is hope for the future, but challenges that we have now, that aspect of protest, I, I think has always been part of Pride, um, yeah. visibility. And, you know, our theme for Pride uh, this year is stronger together. And clearly, yeah. you know, with all of us working together, we are stronger together and have to stay together um, as we work uh, for progress and equity and equality. So thank you so much. What a fantastic conversation. We very much appreciate your being here. Uh, congratulations on the birth of your, of your son. And uh, it, it was so great to talk with you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you uh, for coming to this session. Um, and again, we are stronger together. And it's all about pride. Produced by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services.